Hi guys, welcome to another insightful episode of the Millennial Talk Show, where we talk about issues that affect millennials and how to deal with them. This is the last week in May 2022, and definitely this is the last episode for the month of May. Well, we have been talking about diverse topics from the beginning of the month of May, and today is not going to be any different. We have something Um, you know, different to talk about as well. And we have something for the small businesses. So if you're an SME, small, nano, micro business, this episode is definitely for you. So stick around for all the juicy information that we have for you. Well, Nigeria's Africa's largest economy has a unique demographic that is predominantly young people from the age of 18 to 45. Now, according to the National Bureau of Statistics, the micro, small, and medium enterprises account for over 50% of Nigeria's gross domestic product and are currently about 41.5 million in number. Now, young entrepreneurs are in the majority from the micro to small businesses and have shown resilience and determination to create wealth and economic opportunities through their enterprise. Now, despite the challenges of Nigeria's business environment, which are of several dimensions, like we know, there are opportunities for the young entrepreneurs to achieve skill. Now, in today's episode of the Millennial Talk Show, we will be exploring how young entrepreneurs can navigate the challenging Nigerian business environment. And with me, I have Mr. Ayo Bankole Akin Tujoye, the convener of the now rebranded Lagos SME Bootcamp. Welcome to the show, sir. Hi, thank you for having me. How's it going? It's going good. It's great to have you on the show. Let's go straight to the first question. But before you run into it, I'd like you, you to just give us a brief introduction um, about yourself. My name is Ayo Bankole. Um, I'm a strategy professional. I support a lot of uh, small and medium enterprises with uh, strategy development, transformation, business planning, corporate turnaround, M&A, and all those kind of things. Um, uh, of course, because a lot of small businesses cannot afford our services, we then set up the Lego SME Bootcamp, now Caledium Lego SME Bootcamp to support um, some of these guys with business management capabilities. Uh, and we've supported over 4,500 MSMEs since then. Uh, Web TV is a very good partner of that platform. Um, I'm also the co-founder and CEO of uh, FederGap. It's a startup that we just developed to okay. offer um, quality solutions to MSMEs in our ecosystem. All right. Amazing. Thank you for that very um, elaborate if, uh, you know, description of yourself. Um, let's go straight to the first question. So, um, in your opinion, how will you ask assess the ease of doing business in Nigeria. Now, what will you say that it has been very encouraging for young en- entrepreneurs in Nigeria or the direct opposite? Okay, so I think that is the direct opposite. Um, I think that um, there was a time when we were on the journey to making it better. Uh, that was when uh, government set up PEBEC, uh, the Presidential Enabling Business Council or something. Yeah. Um, but then things have been taking the downhill since then. Um, uh, the ease of doing business in Nigeria is still struggling. Uh, according to the latest World Bank uh, ratings, uh, we ranked, Nigeria ranked 131 out of 190 economies, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and I think that's really poor. That's poor. Uh, there's another, um, you know, the platform called Enli and Partners. Uh, they rated Nigeria as the second in Africa, you know, um, and the seventh globally, you know, with 15% good trade behind South Africa uh, mm-hmm. on uh, increase of you know those who migrate citizens that migrate you know capital outside of the country right so if things were good in nigeria of course you know your own citizens will not be migrating their money outside of the country so of course um, and then if you look at uh, total personal wealth in nigeria has also experienced a 27 percent decline in the last 10 years yeah it's still constantly decline so i mean these are all pointers to the fact that um, you know things are not Things are not too rosy. Um, a lot yeah. of young people, we have clients, we have community members mm-hmm. who struggle to export um, their products. And how you know, one of the ways you know a country where uh, ease of doing business is um, you know, getting better is how easy it is to manufacture, mm-hmm. how easy it is to export, right? Uh, yeah. So things like after ECOWAS, 
all these bilateral and multilateral agreements are really a waste if your internal processes does not put your country to an advantage. Because what is happening now is that it's easier for people to produce in Ghana, in uh, Senegal, in uh, South Africa, and import to Nigeria than it is for a Nigerian to produce and export to those countries. So at yeah. the end of the day, we will be the net, we will be the net negative advantage of all, all of these agreements. <clears throat> I agree 100%. And honestly, it's very disappointing when you look at the potentials that we have in Nigeria. It seems like everything is actually going to waste. But let's look at the second question. So in terms of access to fund as a leading creator of SME development in Nigeria, has there been a significant improvement in the country? Oh, yeah. So I, I think that has been a significant improvement. Um, especially provided by, you know, guys in the fintech space. Um, you know, the fintech guys have tried, you know, really well to bridge that gap. Uh, however, uh, the gap is still huge. Uh, as a matter of fact, right, um, Nigeria's MSME financing gap is the second largest in the world, right, behind Brazil, uh, according to the World Bank. And, you know, it's estimated at about 158 billion US dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, however, you know, we are thankful for what the guys in the fintech um, space, you know, general homegrown solutions are doing um, um, because the banking space has been unable to do it, to be honest. Uh, but yes, they are also trying, uh, banks credit to the private sector uh, rose year on year to about, uh, uh, to about 35 trillion in November 2021, uh, you know, from 2020, which was just 26 trillion. But again, out of all of these, um, only less than 5% goes to MSME, while almost 30% goes to the oil and gas sector. So they need to continue. There needs to be an all-inclusive attempt or effort to increase lending to the MSME space. Uh, uh, you know, so if you look at even the MBS, right, the National Bureau of Statistics, you know, they, 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 they show that seven in 10 customers of Nigerian banks do not have access to credit, right? And only 1.8, 1.9 million of the total 47 million uh, uh, BVN holders get loans in the first quarter of 2019. That's that's the drop in the ocean, right? That's outrageous. So access to credit for individuals, for young people, for millennials, access to credit for MSMEs is still very poor. Um, no matter, you know, we 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 have to encourage more people to come into that space. Mm -hmm. Advanced economies are credit economies. Insofar as our economy remains a cash-based economy, what it will mean is that if you are not rich enough to have um, high disposable income. You will not. You would always be limited in your ability to do business, in your ability to grow, because you do not have credit that will empower you to do more than your your current capacity. And that's what we've done with the bootcamp, where we we are trying to create. Uh, we've built an investment bed now called the Feather Gap uh, to provide uh, working capital solutions to to young entrepreneurs who own small businesses and they are unable to scale because of limited working capital. Yeah. Well, I agree with you and you know, um, what most of the uh, comments that you have made. Anyways, um, let, uh, the next question would be, uh, when you look at the structure of youth entrepreneurship interventions from government and private sectors, um, what are the gaps that need to be addressed to unlock economic opportunities? Because I do believe there are gaps that need to be um, breached. So let's even look at some of the you know entrepreneurship interventions that we've had in the country. Um, so that youth entrepreneurship support, the YES program uh, that the BOI uh, is meant to train youths, I would give them loans and all of that. that uh, I was on a panel with the BOI uh, um, CEO some time ago, I can't remember when, and he mentioned that they had reached maybe about, I can't remember now, maybe 400 or 4,000, you know, some drop in the ocean number, right, with that, with that platform. Yeah. Uh, there's also the Empower platform that, uh, you know, public opinion has considered a woeful attempt to alleviate people from poverty that, you know, created some sort of jobs and then would give people 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, you know, monthly. Uh, we also had the, the, the trader money, uh, we had a youth enterprise with innovation. You win. I, I personally think that you win uh, was one of the best initiatives ever. I don't know why that was discontinued. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that um, looking at all of these, right, I think one of the biggest gaps that exist across board is that their inability to scale, right? Yeah. We have about 41 million MSMEs in Nigeria. All of these initiatives combined has not even reached up to 1 million, 
right? Until we are able to reach our MSMEs at scale, right? Yeah. In a way that whatever it is that we do, we are able to scale it in two ways. Number one, scale it in terms of the actual number of people that you are able to reach. Mm -hmm. Number two, scale it in, in terms of the, your beneficiaries. How do you monitor them from ground zero when you reach them with these initiatives? Ensure that their businesses scale on a continuous basis. And that's where uh, impact assessment comes in, right? Yeah. And you may not be able to do impact assessment efficiently until you engage experts or professionals right, in that space, strategy professionals, you know, um, stakeholders who already have relationships with some of these guys, hubs, clusters, and all these people, and put them on your partner with them or collaborate with them or put them on your programs to drive uh, encouragement of growth among these guys. I was at a session where one of the biggest, I'm not going to mention his name, one of the biggest promoters of um, entrepreneurship among young people was complaining that a lot of the beneficiaries of their initiative do not utilize the funding that they get, right? Because there is no e right? How much more government, right? So, uh, so I, and that's what we do with, with the Legal SME Bootcamp Initiative. We have put in place a, 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 a post, um, post intervention structure that nurtures the relationship with these guys and checks their growth and continuously support them. So I think that's the biggest gap, right? The yeah. first is how much are you disbursing? How are you able to monitor how much you are disbursing? What is the relevance of the cost that what you are disbursing to the total uh, value or size of their business? And how can you ensure that you tie what you are disbursing to um, something specifically that is integral to the operations of their business? Number two is mentorship and coaching, right? Who do, do you identify experts that you can map to these guys, technical experts, business management experts, financial experts that can monitor them so that they have the requisite knowledge after. So knowledge is a continuum, right? So after you have intervened in their business, do you then map them to mentors to ensure that there's a continuous, you know, mentorship yeah. uh, to guide them to scale, right? And then, you know, I think there's a lot more regulation is also a big gap. Um, you you encourage these guys on one hand and then you stifle them on the other hand with regulation, multiple taxation. So there are so many of them in, in terms of the gaps. And, you know, we continue to talk and continue to provide solutions to how we can plug this gap. All right. That's amazing. Well, um, I have one final question. And in 30 seconds, uh, what are your final words to this conversation on young entrepreneurs in Nigeria as a convener of um, the Lagos SME Bootcamp? Yeah, my final words is that um, I will continue to encourage the young people. Um, there are tremendous opportunities in this country, tremendous opportunities. Um, uh, you know, and you, you look around you in every sector, there is a problem. And where you are in an environment where there are um, um, abundant supply of problems, then you have, there will be abundant supply of solutions, right? In terms of or abundant opportunity to supply solutions. And, and I would encourage uh, young people to continue to be solution driven. If you're solution driven, then you are value driven. If you are value driven, there is an opportunity to create wealth. Yes. Yes. Thank you for all the insights that you've shared. And I hope that the um, entrepreneurs out there listening would have picked some very important things from this conversation. Well, thank you for being on the show and thank you for coming on short, such short notice. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Bye. 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 All right, guys, you have had it here. I do hope that if you are an uh, entrepreneur or running a small, medium scale business, you'd pick up a thing or two from this conversation. And of course, there's always more. So if you'd like to find out more about the financial market and personal finance, don't forget to visit our website, www.proshare.co. Keep watching. Mm -hmm.